Good morning. I am Venkat Betan Bhatla, Professor of Chemical Engineering at the University of South Florida. Today, I am talking to Rakesh Agarwal, who is the Winthrop Stone Professor in the Davidson School of Chemical Engineering at Purdue University. Jay Kiesling, who is a professor in the Department of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering and also the Bioengineering at the University of California, Berkeley. He is also a senior faculty scientist at the Lawrence Berkeley National Labs. And Christian Schmidt, who is the professor and chair at the Pruitt Family Department of Biomedical Engineering at the University of Florida. They were speakers at the and speakers and panelists at our Meet the Innovator session today, this morning, at our AICHE 2019 conference. Thank you all for joining us today. This session is dedicated to the role that chemical engineers can have in transforming the world. What kind of skills do chemical engineers have to have that allow them to do this? I guess I'll, I'll start. I think chemical engineers have a great skill set and um, a great basis for solving a lot of challenges. I think where they don't get a lot of training is uh, maybe on the finance side, on um, on the entrepreneurial side. So I think training in that to supplement their chemical engineering training can be really helpful. Yeah, I do believe that the emerging as chemical engineering has started at the backbone of chemical of fossils back in 1900s, but as we transition more towards the future, as we lean off the fossils and move towards the renewable resources, I think we are very, we are evolving actually. We have a unprecedented opportunities, as we say, in our skill sets the core skill sets we have, first we will be acquiring the new skill sets, and which would probably, which will certainly include entrepreneurship and finance and all, but, but many other skills in material science, in, uh, in physics, in biomedicals, and, and many other skills, they all will come together because we'll be solving now a lot more complex problems and a lot more interdisciplinary problems than historically we have solved. Mm -hmm. Um, no, yeah, chemical engineers are, are, I think, are ideal for, for solving the world's problems. I mean, first of all, we're um, trying to be great problem solvers. I also think that chemical engineers are, um, have a versatile training, and so that allows them to be great collaborators and to sort of think outside the box. So um, I've always found that, you know, chemical engineers have great, you know, great material science background. They get, you know, some bio exposure. Um, you know, so they have these broad backgrounds that allow them to be highly collaborative and innovative. So. Perhaps closest to the sciences too, among, yes. other, yeah. among yes. engineering. Yes. Exactly. You talked about different fields of innovation this morning. Can you give a very brief description of each field and the impact of innovation in each one of them? So I talked about synthetic biology, the use of engineered biology to solve uh, world challenges. Um, and I think at its core, since it's such a new field of engineering, that it is very um, innovative and um, I think it's always looking toward uh, starting companies um, and getting products out to people. So it's kind of has it at its core already. I talked about the sustainable future and uh, by that I mean the human race as a total. All its, all its needs, and I mean not just the energy need, but also like food as a human being. And, uh, and we are chemical engineers, so we always are interested in chemicals. So I think food, energy, water, chemicals, all four actually is to be met as we move forward. And it has to be met in a very sustainable manner. And I think one of the biggest opportunities which is going to come for chemical engineers in my mind as compared to what it was in the past, in the past, when we dealt with fossils, it was large plants, everything could be stored in big tanks and, and still could do it. But going forward, as we move towards local photons for local needs, like, you know, certainly what we have to emerge is towards more distributed manufacturing, things being done at the local scales and things being done. So what we are going to see is, for example, power generation, chemical generation, all at the local scale, like a micro, micro grid level, and then going outwards from from local, from state to states to nations and across. So I think, as I guess, from large plants to coming inside, we are going to be totally inverting, actually, going from inside to outside. And, uh, and it will be totally local things, local, whether it is medicine or it is, uh, it is um, food, chemicals, whatever have you. So I think 
whether it is a wind plant or it is a solar plant, it's all local resources, local needs, local meats, like, you know, and chemical engineers are absolutely perfectly equipped for that. Uh, it's an unprecedented opportunity in my mind. It's a great place to be right now and being innovative. Um, so I spoke today on um, sort of biomedical technologies and um, biomaterials that can be used for new biomedical devices, um, and specifically in the area of tissue engineering. So um, creating new therapies that will ha help different types of tissues to heal and to repair damaged tissues. And so um, there's a lot of innovation in this area, and there's a lot of growth in this area because obviously there's big demand um, in the healthcare field for finding solutions for people who have nerve damage or um, have you know, cardiovascular problems or something like that. So a lot of innovations. So, thank you. Um, it's often thought that uh, the magnification of our power through uh, energy and machines has revolutionized, uh, advanced humanity over, if you look at humanity over thousands of years, mm -hmm. in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, sometimes it's mentioned that uh, magnification of our ability to think through artificial intelligence and such data sciences uh, could bring about the next revolution. So in this sense, I, with that, with that uh, background, I'd ask you not to lead you into that specific field, <laughs> but do you think there are other fields that you foresee chemical engineers should contribute to or more to? Well, there's certainly um, fields that chemical engineering can can help a lot. Um, so, you know, biotechnology is and biomedical engineering are, are kind of recent additions to chemical engineering. Um, when I was being trained as a chemical engineer, that was it was just kind of when biotechnology was getting started in chemical engineering. Um, and I'd say there's still a long way to go. Um, if, if I had to think about one thing, though, I think chemical engineers should pay attention to, and that is problems of underserved populations. Um, a lot of technologies, when you initially create them, can be really expensive. They can be life-saving, but expensive, and therefore don't benefit people um, uh, who don't have the means to pay for them. And so I think um, trying to think about those technologies and how they can serve everyone um, will really be great for humanity. I, I totally agree with Jay. I, I think uh, the, the last point he has mentioned, I think, is, is a remarkable one in my mind. Like, you know, to, when I said local needs, the local thing, I think it's very important if you look at the world as, uh, so historically what has happened was that only those who could afford the fossil resources, so that power and energy yeah. which you said, belong to them really, and they were the realists. But I think this will democratize in some sense because once you start using solar energy all over the world, it is, it's not having or not have nots. And I think, so that certainly is true, and in terms of the technology, what will make use of that? So, for example, the, the thing which I talked today is, is PV electric farming. So if you push it a little bit more, what you find is it is connected with weather patterns, it is connected with the crop growths, and during flowering season, during you know, different grain growth seasons. So the, will the artificial intelligence and will the data mining and will all those be part of uh, chemical engineering. I think it will be just a day-to-day -to -day use tool. Those technologies will develop, you will use their productive powers, and you will connect all the logistics which is being supplied. And I think it will be just on the app for everyone to, that's how I envision yeah, that. Uh, so you're sitting somewhere in some village in India, and you're, you're using app and saying, okay, today I'm going to operate this thing this day, or I'm going to do this. So, so I, I think, uh, and material science is another example, like biotechnology, like, you know, we have moved. Like in, in my own research, I'm very happy on the on the material science, which I never imagined I would ever be. So, so we learn, we solve complex problems, we learn things, and those technologies automatically will walk in within chemically. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I agree with many of the things that were said here, and in particular, I think um, you know, data science is is you know penetrating more and more, um, and sort of the. Um, sort of the next revolution and where things are going. So I think having that integrated, I mean, and, you know, integrating that into, you know, the curriculum of, you know, so thinking to the students and how they're being educated, 
um, is important. And so, um, you know, I, I think there's, you know, having more integrated into the chemical engineering curriculum um, and sort of the base level of training that our students get, it's going to be absolutely critical because it's going to be part of everything in every field. So um, that's just one perspective. Um, but in terms of next areas, I mean, I think, you know, other areas, I mean, advanced materials, I think it's absolutely critical. Um, and that's an area where um, chemical engineers already play a large role, but I think, you know, generating those next materials is going to be critical. And then, um, you know, I think an area where they haven't played as much of a role but are starting to play more of a role um, is the environment. Um, sort of, you know, um, sort of some of the things that you talked about with sustainability and so forth. Um, I think there's more of that that needs to come uh, because that's absolutely critical for the future. And moving towards the electronic devices also, yeah. because the world is getting more electrified and, mm -hmm. and there's a need for us to take the material science, prepare mm -hmm. those devices, and find cheaper chemistry and chemical ways of doing it. Biomaterials, new materials, sustainable technologies, yep. local solutions. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. A lot for chemical engineers to do. <laughs> and thank you all again for being part of the Meet the Innovator session in our conference today. And, uh, and thank you for thank having you. us. Thank, thank you. you.